Hello, hey guys, Boston fan back with another TTM minute where I spend multiple minutes just generally opening TTMs and shooting the proverbial SH expletive T with you guys. Um, so I have three TTMs to share today. It's been a while since I have filmed or written letters because work is stressful and when work gets stressful, I tend to shut down. Also a couple purchases that I wanted to review with you guys. First, I found maybe one of the last update hanger boxes at Walgreens. They don't have the Walgreens yellow. Um, and I don't know whether I should open this or keep it sealed. I have a small sealed, small sealed collection. Um, I think I have 19 update one hanger, a hanger of 2020 series two with the Lewis Robert rookie card. Um, one hanger of 2021 series one and like three hangers of 2021 series two and then this so do i add this to my sealed collection just leave it sealed or do i bust it so i want to know from you guys what the heck i should do because i sure as heck don't the other is i made a purchase on ebay and it came through um, i went to a card show last saturday the best flipping card show um got a couple ttm pickup fuel type things there was not a lot of vintage there um, certainly not a lot of like 60s, 70s stuff. It's mostly ultra modern. But there's this one card. It's come down in value uh, in recent years or recent months, I should say. And I saw it. It was a really good price. It was $20. Um, and I hemmed and I hawed and I didn't know if I want to buy it. And I decided, no, nah, you know, I, I probably can do better if I find it online. Left the show and immediately regretted that I didn't buy the card. Um, and I want the card because it's, I think, going to be iconic in terms of this generation of the, the what we, I guess, call ultra-modern or modern cards. Um, and it's a nice card to have. I think it's pretty cool adding to my collection. I'm really excited I got it. So I went online, and lo and behold, I did get it for cheaper than um, I would have bought it at the show. And it comes PSA slabbed. It comes as a 7, but I prescribe to that thought, I think, from those back pages that you buy the card, not the grade. And it is a Juan Soto 2018 Tops Update US 300. Um, and it's just, I don't think it's going to be one of those iconic cards of this generation. Um, we'll see what Soto does as a Padre. Um, and then I don't know why it has a 7, not an 8, 9, or 10. Like, I, I can't tell the difference. It looks fantastic to me. Um, there's no corner wear. I don't see any surface blemishes. I don't see any edge wear really at all. So who knows why I got a seven. I think it's pretty cool. I'm really happy to add this to my collection. Love that it's PSA slab just because I think it looks cool. But again, seven, eight, nine. If the card is good and the card looks all right, I don't care what the grade is. I just want the card. So glad to add that to my collection. Glad that I got it cheaper than the show. And, you know, I think it's something that I'm going to enjoy for a long time. So then we have three TTMs and we'll just look at them, see who got back. So the first one comes to us from Southern Maine. So I think I know who this is. Um, and this would be a two week return. If it is this person. Right, yeah. And so let's see, there's my letter in there and probably index cards. So. I'm going to do a little extra ripping to get it out. There's a card in there, which I don't remember sending, so maybe it's not the person I This is way harder than it should be. Sorry, everybody. Okay, so it is. So it is Joan Benoit Samuelson. So this is a card, Centennial Olympic Games. Ellen something on, and then her signature, Joan Benoit. I don't know, officially licensed product of the Atlanta Committee for the Olympic Games. So this is a 1996 card that she sent. That's pretty cool. Um, so I sent to her, I was inspired by um, Junk Wax Hero, who collects like main sport legends um, and kind of getting back to my, my, my main focus of my collection, which is Boston sports and Boston sports history. Um, and Joan Benoit was... Alan, have a great run through life. Joan Benoit Samuelson. Joan Benoit Samuelson. She signed all four index cards. That's pretty cool. And the, the card. Um, so anyway, so I, I getting back into Boston history. And one of the big things in Boston is the Boston Marathon. And I, I know you guys have, have heard about it and stuff. But it's like a real big deal here in Massachusetts. We've got a holiday, Patriots Day. And when is Patriots Day? I'll make a video on how 
amazing Patriots Day is. Um, but it's like the best day ever. And the marathon is just such a huge deal. And, and every year we go and watch it and we bring the kids now. And it's just, it's just a great day in Massachusetts. It's, honestly, it's my favorite day of the year in Massachusetts. It beats Christmas, it beats 4th of July. It's just the best day. Um, and I don't have a lot of Boston Marathon stuff in my collection. In fact, I have no Boston Marathon stuff in my collection. So I thought, if I'm really going to be a Boston collector and a Boston fan, and I do love the marathon, and I love everything that has to do with the marathon and Patriots Day, what the heck am I doing not collecting it? So I wrote to Joan Benoit Samuelson. She um, won the 1979 and 1983 Boston Marathon. At the time, I think she had the record for female runners. Um, could be wrong on that. Um, she actually ran it again multiple years as, as, um, as an elderly person in 2014, she ran and she came in 245th in the whole, whole marathon. She came in 245th at age 62, which I think is pretty darn awesome. Um, but aside from that, she's also a gold medalist. She won the marathon in 1984 in Los Angeles. And that was the first time that women were a, competing in the marathon in the olympics so she won the first ever marathon gold medal for a woman um but she's recognized here as just a general marathon champion she's on the telecast every year um and so i thought if i'm going to expand and i should because it just fits my collection and what i typically enjoy um i should send to her first out of all the other marathon people i've got a couple other addresses that i'll probably be sending out to um, so really glad to add her, Ms. Sam Benoit Samuelson. Thank you so much for the return, the awesome card. That'll be, look really cool. And for the additional autographs, I really do appreciate that. Um, first marathon autograph in my collection. That was two return. Next we have coming from suburban Illinois. So these are all backlogged a little bit. This is February 1st because I just haven't been sending out and haven't made a video in a while because life. This comes from Jack Perconti. So Jack Perconti, this is a two-week return. He signed an 85 tops, 83 Donners on the Indians, 83 tops. That turned out really nice on the Indians. 83 Fleer. And then I had, so these are all the cards I had in my head, two 86s at the end. And so I chucked them both in. Usually I don't send six cards, but that's what I had. And I figured empty his slot in my common box. Um, Jack Bracani played seven years in the major leagues from 1980 to 1986. He played for the Dodgers, the Indians, which you see on this card, um, Seattle, which you see on the 86, and a little bit with the Chicago White Sox. Um, you know, he was mostly a utility infielder, second baseman, you know, didn't start all the time, started sometimes. Um, 1984, he had 29 stolen bases. He had 31 stolen bases in 1985. Um, and he was a member of the 1981 Dodgers who won the World Series, um, though he didn't play in the World Series or anything. Um, and for his career, he had 270, two home runs, 76 RBIs, and 78 steals. Kind of interesting that he had more RBIs than steals. New autograph to my collection, so that would be two new autographs in my collection so far. Really cool. You guys know that I love adding new players to my collection that I didn't have before. And we'll get to our last TTM of the session coming right up. It is out of Springfield, Missouri, postmarked January 17th, and it is Scott Bales, former pitcher for the Indians. And so I sent it the 19th. This came back the 9th, sorry, the 17th. So this is just over a week return for Scott Bales. Nice to get another new player for my collection. He signed the 87 tops really nicely, and that's really nice blue Sharpie. His 86 Fleer, this might be the update. It is. So I had an update set, but I pulled the bonds for my personal collection. So I was like, well, I might as well get it signed. It's 86 tops traded. Second 87 tops and his 88 tops. But this first 87 tops really pops out to me. Um, Scott Bales played nine years in the major leagues for Cleveland, Anaheim, and Texas. Um, as a rookie in 1986, he went 10 and 10 with seven saves 
which I thought was pretty cool. In 1988, he became a starter, full-time starter. Um, and he had five complete games and two shutouts that year, which was pretty cool. And I, I'm pretty sure I asked about that. He didn't respond to my, my letter at all. Um, but that's generally pretty cool. You know, five complete games now would be insane. And Scott Bales, you know, was generally a mediocre pitcher, 39 and 44 career record with a 4.70 ERA, 13 career saves. So he had six saves after his rookie season. So kind of just a middle of the road starter and reliever, not great, but not terrible. Um, and he had five complete games in 1988, and that would be outstanding today. Two shutouts that year, and you don't see shutouts anymore. So, you know, I find it interesting going back to that, even the 80s and before that, just the amount of innings that pitchers worked and how the game has changed so much and that these pitchers you know say scott bales who the heck is scott bales and here he is completing five games throwing two shutouts in a year and your best pitchers now maybe get a shutout in a year and a complete game in a year so pretty cool so today was a a day of ttm firsts uh three autograph three returns three brand new autographs to my collection very glad to add all three um, so for the three people who signed, thank you so much for responding to my mail. I do appreciate it. Um, for all of you out there, thanks. This is a longer video, but just trying to loosen things up and not, not try to, you know, rush through my videos, talk more about my collection, what I enjoy, what I think is going on. Um, so I hope you enjoy the video. I hope you got something out of it and I hope that you will tune in next time that I decide to film something. So until then, um, I will talk to you later.